announcements and the future of the format. I'm Gravity Groove here for Not Safe for Work Magic. Let's talk about it. So, let me just read this off for y'all before we uh, get into it here. New Companion Rule. Once per game, anytime you can cast a sorcery, you may pay three generic mana to put your companion from your sideboard into your hand as a special action. This is a special action, not an activated ability. Okay, so there's that. I don't know uh, if that solves the problem. I think that just makes aggro companions measurably worse, and Yorion still is great, because Yorion's a control finisher. Um, standard Agent of Treachery is banned. Oh, wait, okay, one more. Fires of Invention is banned. Well, I mean, yeah, it should have been a million years ago. Um, these cards are also suspended in Historic. Uh, the problem is, that's it. That's it. That's it. Is that good enough? Oh, boy. Is that good enough? Um, let me read their bullshit quote first. Over the course of the last several weeks, Fires of Invention decks have been given a dominant win rate and metagame presence in standard, achieving a 55% win rate and having even or favorable matchups against all other archetypes. In addition, as we craft and test future environments, we found the card Fires of Invention as significant design and balance constraint because of the flexible nature of cost-reducing effects. Fires of Invention decks increase compared to... Uh, we've seen the win rates of Fires of Invention decks increase compared to past standard metagame environments. Because the Fires of Invention decks current high weight... high weight... high win rate and metagame share, the risks and design constraints it poses to the environment going forward, it is banned in standard. Next, recently, we've seen archetypes that use Luca or Winota to put Agent directly into play. While part of the design intent of those cards was to provide creative ways to deploy high power cards, we've observed that using them to play an early Agent of Treachery is uniquely frustrating to play against. The effect of stealing any land or key card when at high play rate reduces diversity in the meta. Decks built around unique permanents or big creatures have less chances to succeed when opponents can steal their key cards without specific deck building intent. Therefore, in order to allow for more comeback potential against Luka and Winota decks and to promote deck building diversity in standard, Agent of Treachery is banned. Okay. Now, so only two cards were banned. Companions were given a slap on the wrist. Was this good enough? No, no, of course, of course it's not good enough. What does this mean? Well, the hope from the community, uh, me included, was that all of the mana cheating engines would be stripped out of standard so that we could play a fair interactive magic for a little while. Just to, you know, be nostalgic, I guess. So that would involve getting rid of Uro and Wilderness Reclamation and Nyssa and Winota. In which case, at that point, I don't even know if getting rid of Teferi matters, but you should probably get rid of Teferi too. But instead, we got rid of Agent of Treachery and Fires of Invention. So let's talk about some of the problems that are going to pop up now. So Luca is still here, and Luca is still going to be summoning Dream Trawler out of tokens, if they so choose. Uh, they can just replace the uh, three Agent of Treacheries in that deck with three Dream Trawlers, and the deck is just as obnoxious, just as difficult to deal with. Um, they can they can go for the Big Pig, the end raise four runners, and just be token decks that are uh, green, white, blue, and finish by, or I guess four colors is gone, so it would be green, white, red? It would just, it would still be... I guess they'd just be doing green instead of blue. Yeah, okay, so they can just use uh, the end raise four runners instead as a finisher, and all your tokens just get get huge and kill your opponent. Uh, you can also go and fetch uh, Godzilla, the, uh, what the hell is it called? Um, the A day, you, your something. All I remember is the fucking Godzilla name. Uh, 
Let's see if Godzilla cards come up. Yeah, okay. Yadaro. Yadaro. They can just turn a token into Yadaro and smack you for an 8-8 haste creature. Definitely not as powerful as Agent of Treachery. Not even going to pretend. But still, still, Luca turning a token into uh, an absolute beating kind of fucked up. And Luca's going to still be around to present more problems as new cards come out to make this problem worse and worse and worse and worse. And really, if you think about it, uh, how Luca operates is going to be a problem so long as the format exists. Because turning a half a card, a token, into uh, an absolute ass render like Godzilla or Dream Trawler or whatever is just fucking psychotic value and they can still protect the goddamn combo with Teferi! You can't even reliably fucking counterspell it! Uh... So there's that, which is going to be fun, I'm sure. And then there's Winota, which now is just probably going to be looking for Kenny. Let's see, probably just Kenny and Hactos, right? I don't even know if we have any Kenriths, because we don't play that shit. Ken... Yeah, they're just going to be going to get this asshole, or uh, Hactos. They'll just run, you know, 4 and 4, or 3 and 3... And instead of getting Age of Treachery, which admittedly is, again, better than either of these cards, they're just going to be getting this. Which is, you know, also fucking horrifying when they can do it on turn three. And Hactos is a difficult fucking card to interact with unless you're playing the stupid Sultai deck that we've been playing where you can just Extinction Event him or Cry of Carnarium him. Uh, Nissa, of course, is going to make a full force return and be back to uh, punishing your ass in no time. Um... We've seen before the meta shifted to the uh, the Jeskai Luka deck that Bant Uro was a very popular uh, build. And let's see if we can find an old copy of that. Just so we can have a look at what's going to come back. Also known as Bant Ramp. Uh, we're going to see four Nissas, four Teferis. Two to three Dream Trawlers, four Crisises, two to three Night of Autumns, three to four Uros, Shatter the Skies, Growth Spirals, Elspeth Conqueror's Death, Omen, and of course, of course, still, fucking Yorion. Because why wouldn't you run Yorion with Omen of the Sea and Elspeth Conqueror's Death and all this other lovely, lovely shit like Night of the Autumn? Yeah, the three, the three mana cost isn't going to fucking change a thing. So we're just going to go back to uh, Good Stuff Bant, which was annoying as shit to play against then, and it's going to be annoying as shit to play against now. And of course, drum roll please. Wilderness Reclamation wasn't banned. Isn't that great? Isn't that everyone's favorite thing to play against? Wilderness Reclamation? Where they just play it on turn four? And then you could never cast the spell again until you get Expansion Explosion for 850,000 to the face. Or you die to a 900-900 shark. Isn't that fun? Isn't that interactive? Some of them even play Teferi. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Some of them play Uro. Oh no! It's, it's never gonna end. It's just bad with bad and bad on bad. And... It's like they didn't understand why people were angry. <laughs> it's like fundamentally they didn't understand why people were fed up with this fucking format. They're like, oh, it's just that Luca age and the treachery thing. That's it. That's the only problem. People are so mad. People are mad because all of these free mana engines and all of these uninteractive, ridiculous ways to win have made the game feel like a slot machine. Or like Pachinko instead of Magic. They don't feel any agency when they play the game. And not everyone is like Grinders. Not everyone wants to play the absolute best fucking card over and over and over again because it's unfulfilling. Sure, you could win a lot with the goddamn Widow to deck, but is it fulfilling to just spin the fucking wheel 
and you know on turn three your opponent's dead is that fun because to me that sounds a lot like the card game war which was something i remember being taught as like a six-year-old that you take an ordinary deck of 52 playing cards and you flip one and the other guy flips one and the high card wins does this sound like fun to you is that fun is that what this game is now war jesus fucking christ um on top of all that the changes aren't even going to go through on arena until thursday <laughs> so so we've got three more days three more days of just guy luca <laughs> Uh. <laughs> oh my god okay it's too early to start drinking chat but uh you know i can i can uh i can do something else i can go hit the bag i got a bag downstairs so i'll hit the bag okay i'll tape my wrists first Got to be careful. You don't want to punch a bag angry. Good way to break your wrist. Be careful, okay? So <laughs> that's where we're that's where we're at in standard. And um, said asshole who shall remain nameless, who I mentioned was the one who said uh, Winota is not it's not a broken card. You just need removal for it. Uh, also started shit with uh, Seth and Olive on Twitter giving him the same line about how Winota is a great card and it doesn't deserve a ban and uh, you leave Brittany alone. And uh, he cited data, which, you know, is what you're supposed to do. And if Wizards allowed us to have more data, we'd have more and have a more accurate picture. But the best data we had for that was the Hooglandia Open where Winota was played in Historic and had a 70% win rate. 70% um, win rate is beyond fucking ridiculous and the top eight for that as i remember was like six winota decks they were all virtually identical so if you want data asshole who will remain nameless because you don't deserve a shout out there's your data you stupid fuck removal is not the answer to cards like that you stupid fuck removing the card is the answer so that's the <laughs> that's the ban list announcement for the day Holy shit! Um, I don't really want to play. <laughs> like, at all. I'm, I'm extremely demotivated to play based on that announcement. Um, everything in Ranked is still largely just the, the Jeskai Luka deck, which is just a complete drag for me to play uh, against. And... Um, And nothing's going to really change, other than we're going to see a lot more Uro. Which I suppose is at least slightly more attackable. Uh, I guess. Man, I am, uh, I am bummed out by this. Well, we're back at the Platinum floor, so it doesn't fucking matter what we do. We're going to play this dumb deck, which will also be, uh, also be gone soon. I don't think decks that run companions in aggro settings are going to be viable based on this change. Like, I can't afford to uh, to pay 8 mana effectively to cast Obosh. I don't think it's enough of a payoff to warp our deck as much as we, we would would have to warp it. I think you're back to just regular old uh, Rakdos aggro is a reasonable card, or a reasonable setup, and uh, original, original Mardu Knights. Mardu Knights is still super explosive. Gosh, I hope we get another uh, swamp. If we get another swamp. This is not that bad. Okay, that sucks. That sucks too.
Come on, land. I believe there's 25 in this deck, surprisingly. It's because it has a lot of things it can burn its mana on, like Whisper Squads and uh, this thing and four castles and... Damn it. Well, we just miss on mana and die. Gotta love the classics. At least we're gonna get to see a decent amount of the deck now so we can know what to sideboard. It's probably uh, not much. I think we have a couple murderous riders that come in. We probably bring in the uh, the shadow spears to try to outsize them a little bit. And if we don't hit a land here, I'm just going to concede. Yep. Good interactive game there. Murderous rider. Shadow Spears. Honestly, I think that's it. I don't know if they're going to have good disfigure targets. Based on what we've seen there, it's kind of hard to assess that. Drill bit still seems like it's good. I guess we can cut to rest and put in the disfigure, see how that feels. If it matters, like if we get to play a game this time, who knows? Man, when this track draws well, it's pretty fun and puts on a lot of pressure. When it does that, boy, does it just look like a pile of garbage. The top decks in the format don't ever have that problem. They have too much sifting. Do ever have really truly bad games? Whisper Squad, Banner, Rotting Regisaur. Sure. So we Whisper Squad into Whisper Squad into Banner. Our opponent always has Ar Arboreal Grazer on turn one. Which may mean we just can't win. Okay, we have some options here. Scorching Dragon Fire on a Whisper Squad is pretty funny. I think we have to save this to use it on Kahiri. Or Kahira. Fires of Invention? Okay. Oh, this is Gruel Aggro. Taking the turn off to draw. Oh, I guess they can forever because of this. That's actually pretty cool. Okay. 
Okay. That was a fun interactive game. See how much stuff we did there? So much stuff. And that's part of why they banned fires. But again, we just have to play with this format until they fix it on Thursday. And the fix isn't even good. It's a band-aid over like a 10 inch wound. We'll just, you know, that'll fix it. Oh boy, I should just build the band ramp deck now. Stompy. That's pretty good. I really, really hate these hex proof decks. we can I guess we can uh, dispute the next threat but unless we find extinction event we're dead wow we're having no interactive games today huh just not going to get to play magic why would it be any different than any other day top decks Nissa Lovely. So I guess now we can do this. And look for our murderous rider or heartless. And I guess this solves the problem, right? Six, seven, oh no, they have enough mana for it now. Yeah, we're just boned. We are boned. Mm -hmm. Does it matter? Does it matter? Just gonna lose to literal everything today, apparently. Even stupid garbage is good enough to beat our deck. Cool. Having a good time. Well, let's see if we can draw that badly and die again. That'll be fun. This is our version 2 of this deck, the one that uh, is more suited to control matchups. And we've drawn one land in our opening hand twice in a row. Okay. Welcome to Not Safe for Work Magic, uh, Draw Bad and Die Edition. It's every edition. Hey look, we played 
three matches and four matches and three of them have had Arboreal Grazer on turn one. Magic is a diverse tapestry. Um, we want both of these. We can't fucking cast anything next turn, so we'll take them. Take them and do nothing next turn. The exact same opening they had last game. We played an aggro deck and drew like shit. They played an aggro deck and we can't possibly win ever. Isn't that cool? I love it. It's great. Fantastic. Uh, I think we're just going to blow this up. Hoping we can find a land here. Probably gonna see this turn into a six six and six six and swing. We'll probably just chump it. No land. Yep. Called it. And it's flying. Cool. <laughs> and now we die. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, doesn't seem to matter what we play today. We're just going to draw bad and die. Our opponent could have 40 islands and 20 uh, other cards, and we would lose. Hell, I'm convinced our opponent could have 60 islands, and we'd lose. Island is the most powerful land. It's three times in a row. 36 land, 44 other. One land, six cards, draw seven. 8% of the time, it's happened four times out of five making it like a 0.5 percent chance to have occurred in this fashion good shuffler think we're ladder in this season. Really don't think we're ladder in this season. <laughs> uh, yep, Mardu Knights. Got it. Oh boy.
Oh boy. We're the control deck. We have three land. Well, we still don't have any green mana. Probably should have done that before they attacked. They could draw fight as one. I wonder if those neutralizers should have been duresses. Holy fuck, man. <laughs> Seven other. Zero land. 1.2% chance. Like, I'm, I'm glad this is happening on this show. I really am. Because you need to see how incredibly fucked up the shuffling experience of this simulated card game is like you've watched me play for what 25 minutes and i've drawn one lander one lander one lander one lander no lander it's incredible Yep. So he has fight as one. So uh, there goes our cry of the carnarium. Now we're probably dead. Now we're probably dead. Yep. Oh, he doesn't have it. Okay. Well, we get to kill Worthy Knight no matter what.
we hit a land, we can extinction event. Gross. Gross. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah. As I've said before in these matchups, Cry the Carnarium is the only important card. And without it, you can't win. See if we can get one keepable hand in uh, three games. That'd be cool. <clears throat> one keepable hand, maybe. One time. Anybody? I mean, I guess. Yep. Forces him to play. Would have been nice to get a green mana there to get our Cavalier on, but you know. Oh, he gets to recast. Forces us to murder us right the Loris and be behind. Chances are if we don't hit Cry of the Carnarian, we just can't win. Missing land in our 36 land deck. And he hasn't missed once. Wow. Now, what's it like to draw good? Someone tell me. Be great to be lucky. Holy fucking shit. We're playing a deck packed to the gills with anti aggro, and we lost to Mardu Knights commandingly. Commandingly. We didn't have a fucking prayer. Wow. We're not even losing to traditional, uh,. Traditional big bats. We're just losing to literal everything. We're gonna lose every fucking game today on the rank floor and In fashions that have nothing to do with our play patterns or even our deck selection. We're just Hitting that uh, 
that variance where we lose every game no matter what we do. They don't even have any more platinum opponents for us. We gotta, we gotta play diamond. What a miserable fucking format this is. Same old fucking shit. Probably just doesn't matter what we do. Probably just doesn't matter what we do now. Yep. Dissenters are welcome to debate me in battle. No thanks. Suck a dick in hell. Next opponent. So is that is that pattern really going to be any better or any different? If they're just getting um, Dream Trawler there instead of Agent of Treachery. I don't think it's going to be functionally different. Dream Trawler is still extremely difficult to interact with to the point of it almost being uninteractable. They're going to have a token based deck to bring it out, which means sacrifice effects and needed effects are going to be useless, so you have to be playing Shadow of the Sky or Extinction Event. And they're going to be a deck that's in blue, so they can fucking counter it. They're going to counter your 4 mana removal spell with a 2 mana removal spell, and you're never going to fucking get anywhere, and it's going to suck ass, and you're going to quit playing the game. And you won't be alone. So this is probably, probably, Wilderness Reclamation. Yep. Oh, okay, Jund Food. It's Jund Food, everybody. Well, I wish I kept that Cry of the Carnarium now. Oh, we're on coffee. Fuck. Stop. Traditionally, we have a good matchup against this deck. Cash Tease of War hits a million permanents. They run Crumbs and Witch's Oven. I think we want both of those, huh? Another matchup in which Cry of the Carnarium is the most important card to stop their uh, 
cat engine from going on forever and ever and ever and ever. This is very, very annoying. They have access to a million mana and continue to do nothing. We could also have Bolas Citadel, which is very, very strong. Very hard to interact with. Um, I think we just take another turn off and plan to Shark Typhoon or Counterspell a Bola Citadel. Really, just not getting what we want. What we want is land. Dispute probably not good enough to counter anything now. He's got six, seven, eight, seven mana at the moment. Heartless act. Sure. Makes Uro bad. Well, we can't stall any longer. Casualties and cry. Um, well, we want both. Now we're dead to Bolas Citadel, but what you gonna do? I mean, we've got casualties to potentially kill it in a turn or two, but usually die the turn comes down. Hundred percent. He just played around us the entire game. And there's nothing we can really do now. Um, we can Tamio get a land. Potentially casualties next turn, but we're not going to be able to reliably you would make an reliably do that. For my study. The past is never forgotten. I believe he needs 10 non-land permanents. Does this count itself? Oh, so we can't even interact. Well, that's fun. Another uninteractive combo deck. Fun, fun. We had a window there, we just didn't draw it.
Does not matter what deck I play or what deck I play against, I will lose. Seems like it's written in the stars. It's a cosmic punishment for some horrible misdeed that I've done that I no longer have a memory of because it was a different life. <sighs> this is going to be the last one I can handle for now. Losing for an hour straight is uh, not exactly a bomb for the soul. And when you're not having fun, you should not do it. Unless it's your job. In that case, maybe you should quit your job. But, you know, finish out your, your day, man. Then quit your job. Let's continue the uh, infinite suck. Okay. course just hoping to find a cry our duress was duress that's peachy keen our casualties of war was duress that's peachy keen need one green and then colors don't matter Three duresses and 11 cards. He drew three duresses and 11 cards, everyone. Three duresses and 11 cards. Should have attacked there because we're not blocking. That was a missed three points of damage. And we brick again.
living for Citadel off the top. I think I only have one basic left. Oh, two. That's a really messed up card, isn't it? Seems like a really messed up card. I wonder if Nightmare is just worse than Counterspell here. Duress on one, Omen on two, seems decent. Fuck! This fucking asshole in having Duress on one every fucking game! This means he has no targets, right? Jesus, fuck! Have to assume it's Tommy out. Still quite a bit of mana off from casting anything, so it doesn't matter. But again, two duresses in his top ten. Let's see if we get three. Which would make it exactly like last game. Currently have no interaction at all. Trying to cry would be pretty great. Play this first. Now, any land gets us to casualties of war.
kind of hoping he just uses the priest here. gonna burn him there. So we're gonna prioritize Cavalier of Thorns before casting Uro because we know he's acclaimed the Firstborn deck. I know we don't see any red mana now. Well he very easily could produce some. We're in pretty desperate need of some interaction. just perfectly off his deck with only two land because he's lucky and we're not like, what a joke dead to claim the firstborn Well, we just keep drawing fucking nothing, so. Got riders, disfigures, cries, extinction events. Uh, one, two, three, four. Not enough for that to matter, so we'll decline. Not particularly helpful. Okay. We're just hoping he doesn't have a mountain and a, uh, a claim the firstborn right now. God, that was an annoying match. And our one win of the day. Woof. Well, if you have suggestions for uh, decks you think are going to overperform in this new meta, let me know. Uh, I assume it's just going to be Bant Good Stuff and uh, Wilderness Reclamation, based on what I've seen. But we all know that uh, Luca is still pretty fucking busted, and Winota is still pretty fucking busted. So I expect to see some uh, equally annoying and difficult to deal with things come out of those camps. Uh, I've been Not Safe for Work Magic, and this is Gravity Groove. Invert those. And uh, I hope you've learned a little something today. I hope you are one of 900 million people who's really enjoying Standard. I'm not, but it's my job to report on it, so I'm going to keep doing that, at least for a little while. Uh, we're probably going to get into some Rune Terra pretty soon here. Um, I've been messing around with the tutorials, and it feels confusing as hell going from this to that. But we're going to keep messing with the tutorials, see if we can figure it out, and uh, maybe we can start streaming Rune Terra. Uh, thanks for watching once again, and 
I will see you later. Boom. Something.